والصلاه والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد so we began discussing uh, some of the main elements of our deen which the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam discusses in this hadith the famous hadith known as the hadith of jibril alayhi salam and we mentioned in our last session the difference between uh, al-islam and al-iman and we said al-iman when it comes together with al-islam in any hadith or in any ayah uh, then islam refers to the outward acts of submission and iman refers to the inward um, actions or the inward beliefs and we began discussing some of the pillars of iman we mentioned the first pillar of iman which is al iman billah which everything is centered around uh, because the books and the messengers and the angels these are all sent uh, by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all uh, you, you know made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it's all centered around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and we mentioned previously that there are several things when it comes to Iman Billah um, which are involved and which are requirements for uh, having Iman Billah having Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala many a times we take only the first element of it and then we uh, ignore the rest of the elements the first element is that we recognize the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many a times what happens is a person recognizes this part, but then leaves the other parts of it. So number one is to recognize the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and in all of these elements, a person needs to do something called tawheed, meaning that not uh, making any partners for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like anything else, nor making anything else like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So making him one, making him one. So number one in his existence, number two in our understanding of him, in our understanding of his qualities, his characteristics, his actions, and so on and so forth. So we recognize all of his qualities, we recognize all of his names, we recognize all of his actions, uh, that he does whatever he wills, uh, and he, uh, you know, uh, he has spoken the, the Quran, it's the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and, you know, all of the characteristics and all of the qualities and all of the actions which I mentioned, we ascribe them as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ascribed them to himself. And in doing so, also, we make sure we do tawheed in that. So when we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sami, is all hearing, his sami is not like, the sum of anything. His ilm is not like the ilm of anything. His knowledge is not like the knowledge of anything. Nor is the knowledge of anyone like the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Both ways, both ways. Nor is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like anything. Nor is anyone's knowledge like the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's unique and he is one uh, in all of his attributes and all of his actions. And number three, we said, that making him one in our actions making him one in our actions this is also very important because there are groups that may have faltered in this particular issue also which is that when we make dua we make dua only to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we do any act of worship when we direct it to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we direct it only to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether that be outward acts of worship like salah like dua, like, um, you know, sacrificing. Uh, any of these actions that we do when it comes to the acts of worship, we dedicate it only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't say that I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but then you have part of your asking to some creation. You have part of your asking or part of your dua, part of your supplication to some creation. And your reliance is on that creation. But rather you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. And this was the uh, shirk which was done and this was the, the the excuse that was given by the mushrikin of the Quraysh. Illa we don't worship them except so that they will get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the excuse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, uh, you know, he is so great and we are so sinful. So we need someone in between. 
We need something in between that we can make dua to. We can uh, seek their help in becoming an intercessor to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they began doing uh, acts of worship like dua and like other acts of worship towards uh, those other uh, creations. So this is the uh, third aspect. And these are the things that we should try and uh, recognize when it comes to worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next thing which is mentioned, أن uh, and then the angels, that you believe in the angels. And of course, uh, we know that one of the virtues in Islam, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, one of the qualities of the believers and the muttaqeen is that الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ There are those who believe in the unseen. And we see that as a virtue, that a person believes in things that they might not see, they might not perceive, or they might not understand having their limited capabilities for intellect. Having a limited, you know, limit to their intellect and having a, li uh, you know, a limit to their um, senses also. So their sight and their hearing. These are all limited things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for us. Yes, there is a use to it, but there is a limit to it. As human beings, there is a limit to these things. And so we recognize that for example, you know, because everyone does Iman Bil Ghaib, everyone believes in the unseen, but it's just that some people believe in the unseen of the creation. And we are saying that believe in the unseen which the Creator has told you about, which the one who is all wise, all knowing has told you about. A person comes and they say, uh, I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to call a plumber, okay, and he's going to fix my pipes for me. Now, do you know what he's going to use? Do you understand the pipes that he's going to use and what, how he's going to operate that process? No, we don't know. We have some level of belief in the unseen. We, we, we understand that, inshallah, this person is going to fix my pipes, but you're believing in the unseen. You're believing in something you don't understand, in something you don't see. So when we recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all-knowing, what this means is anything that he has told us, whether it fits within that capability that Allah has given us, or whether it's outside of that, we recognize that this is something that has come from the all known, come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we uh, believe in that, we believe in those things which uh, we don't, uh, sometimes we don't understand or we might not see, like belief in the angels. And we know that the angels, uh, they carry out tasks for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are a creation who, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون. They do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever he commands and they do whatever they are commanded with by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are angels, uh, the number of angels are, you know, uncountable to be honest. Because uh, in several ahadith it is mentioned that there is al Baytul Ma'mur which is uh, a house which is above the Kaaba, similar to the Kaaba, it is a place of worship for the creations in the heavens. And so in that, in those, uh, you know, in that place, there are angels, hundreds of thousands of angels, which come every day, and then they never return again. And they do, and they do tawaf around it, and they never come back again. So every day, there's new angels coming. And every day there's new angels coming. So imagine how many angels there would be. Imagine the number of angels there would be. There would be uh, an unlimited. Uh, and then there's angels which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described to us some of their tasks. They are those who, uh, they record our deeds. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذْ يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشِّمَالِ قَعِيدِ That when the two receivers they receive, they are sitting both on the right and on the left side. They are recording our good deeds and our uh, bad deeds. There are angels like this assigned to every single person. There are angels who they whisper to us or they inspire us to do good things. Just like we have a, a devil who inspires us to do evil things. Like that there is a, an angel who inspires us to do good things. Just like that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions min bayni wa min khalfihi min amrillah. There are angels that are in front of him and behind him 
and they protect that person by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like that there are angels that um, are rusul, are messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are, uh, you know, some of the greatest of the angels. These are some of the greatest of the angels, just like how the rusul from the human beings are from the greatest of the human beings. And of course, we know that one of the greatest, if not the greatest of the angels is Jibreel alayhi salam, who descended with uh, the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the revelations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the qualities of the angels is that sometimes they can appear in the form of people also. They can appear in the form of people because uh, there's in this hadith, for example, uh, the hadith of Jibreel, uh, Jibreel alayhi salam came in the form of a man, right? He came with white clothes and uh, black hair and so on and so forth. He even came, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentions in the Quran, to Maryam alayhi salam in the form of a man. فَتَمَثَّلَ لَهَا بَشَرًا And he appeared um, a, a man who was very uh, in a good form. He appeared to Maryam alayhi salam and this was an angel. Uh, similarly, even to Lut alayhi salam, um, s- several angels came in the form of men. Similarly to Ibrahim alayhi salam, like this, um, the angels can come also in the form of human beings. So these are the angels, and there is many, many of them, just like we inhabit the earth, the angels inhabit the uh, heavens. The angels inhabit the heavens. And the order that is mentioned here in this hadith, uh, it is in the order of the connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sends the angels. He sends the angels with what? With the books. So that, that should be the next one. He sends the books to who? To the messengers. So that's the next one in the list. So أَنْتُؤْمِنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ So it's in the order of the connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the next one which is mentioned is the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are uh, several books which are, there are several scriptures which are mentioned uh, in the Quran itself and in the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of the ones that we know of, Suhufi uh, Ibrahim wa Musa, the scriptures of Ibrahim and Musa alayhi salam, uh, the Torah, uh, which was the book given to Musa alayhi salam, the Injil, the book given to uh, Isa alayhi salam, the Zabur, uh, the book given to Dawood alayhi salam, and of course uh, the Quran, which was revealed to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Like this, uh, different prophets received their different revelations, uh, and of course, when we recognize that. The books are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we also recognize that anything that is there in the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is haq, is absolute truth. So when a person approaches the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with some level of doubt, then this is definitely a big mistake. This is def- definitely a big mistake. It's not the same way we approach any other thing, any other book or any other uh, piece, of, any other kind of information that we receive. No, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has knowledge of everything and he is the one who has created the creation around us. The next thing that is mentioned is the rusul. And we know that the rusul, they are a, which one is the level above? The Nabi or the Rasul? Who can tell? Rasul. The Rasul is a, of a higher status, of a higher level than the Nabi. And the main difference that uh, is mentioned by the scholars about there are several opinions about what's the difference between Nabi and Rasul, but um, just we'll take one of the one of the famous or well-known uh, opinions on this, which is that a Nabi is someone who Allah Subhanahu wa Taala reveals a revelation to. Okay, He gives him a Naba, a revelation, a, an information to, um, but not necessarily that they are sent to their people, not necessarily that they are sent to their people. As for a Rasul. Rasul from Arsala, you know, uh, someone who is sent, someone who is sent, a messenger. So a Rasul, as well as receiving revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
he is also commanded to go and propagate and to um, you know uh, be a messenger someone who conveys the message to the people so a nabi not necessarily will he be commanded to convey that message but a rasul is someone who is commanded to convey that message and of course we know that when a person is commanded to convey that message there are several things which uh, you know increase in their status number one they're expected to have a higher level of character higher level of character because if their character is not you know you can say almost perfect then the people will say why should we listen to you because your character you know you i remember you lied over there one time you were not trustworthy one time you were like this so people recognize when dealing with people they will recognize that this person he is not uh, trustworthy or one time he was not trustworthy so subhanallah when it comes to a rasul they need to be on a higher level of um, you know when it comes to character when it comes to different things even the effort is greater because a person is dealing with uh, the people there are those who will attack there's those who will harm there's those who will make propaganda speak against that uh, that person and so on and so forth and all of them were from the men and all of them was from the people of the cities not from the people of the deserts and the wilderness and so on and so forth as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ وَلَا نَبِيَا وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا قَبْلَكَ إِلَّا رِجَالًا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْقُرَى that we have not sent ex, um, in the previous nations uh, except for men except for men that we reveal to um, from the people of the Qura the Qura is a reference to uh, the cities and the places of inhabitation inhabitation of the people in the light ta'ala will continue uh, the discussion on the uh, different pillars of iman in our following sitting we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grant us tawfiq he grant us understanding of the words of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he make us from the people of jannah and that he save us from the fire subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu